we'll talk a little bit about our, our corn and our, our dry bean work. Um, with both the trials, the corn and dry bean, we've um, we started out um, with some simple plans. We were looking at just response of these two crops to uh, tillage systems, and the, the emphasis actually was strip till. At that time, strip till was rather new, and we thought, oh, we better better generate some data. Since then, we've we've moved on from tillage. We don't compare tillage systems anymore. We're, we're uh, continue to. Uh, explore different ways of applying starter fertilizer, for, primarily for corn, but we're also looking at some things in the dry bean. And then our most recent entry in this study is uh, row spacing, uh, comparing simply 22 to 30 inch rows. So assuming you still have your handout, if you want to turn the page to page 8, I'm going to talk about the data we've generated in, in the study for both corn and then a little bit later on, on dry bean. And then I'll, I'll tell you what we're doing with this trial. Just the first slide is a look. This was strip-tilled corn. The reason that we were strip-tilling, well, for one, we kind of like the system. But number two is it gives us the opportunity to deep band um, phosphorus fertilizer, 10 30 so on this slide is a response to the fertilizer placements where we've had four site years of data. And of course NDSU does recommend using a starter phosphorus fertilizer in corn irregardless of what your phosphorus levels are. And, uh, and this data would substantiate that, that yes, there's a opportunity for increasing yields. In this case we saw about uh, what a two bushel increase with the, the two by zero band versus untreated check. Also notice on the footnote the, the various phosphorus levels in the in the trials through the years, and then the rate of of uh, 1034 that we used. I say that because in furrow, um, in uh, quite a few of our studies, we've seen a nice response with in furrow application. But as you look at the fine print, you'll see sometimes we got carried away with our rates at 1034 uh, with in furrow application. We feel that it's um, appropriate to apply three to five gallons and um, some years of the trial we were substantially higher in that. In our work when we saw um, application, 1034 oil application as an inferral uh, treatment, uh, when the rates got above 8 gallons per acre, that's when we started seeing some problems, when we started seeing significant stand reduction and sometimes it resulted in yield loss as well. So that's maybe all I need to say about that slide. The next one, uh, the emphasis is how about splitting things? How about uh, a deep banding some if a person strip tilling in the fall, maybe deep banding half the, the recommendation and then uh, supplementing that with the inferral application at planting time. And so the, the circled treatment is that. You can look at the fine print again to see what the, the rates were. Uh, the first year in 2010, uh, we were pretty excited about the data. Uh, last year, um, it still performed all right, but it was very similar to the 2x0 two by, two by band. And notice both years of the work, and we're including this treatment again this year, but both years uh, we did see, a, at least numerically, a higher yield compared to either fall deep band alone or the inferral treatment alone. And we did this too because at the University of Minnesota and Illinois, uh, both in studies they conducted, they saw um, some good things happen with this combination of treatment. So we want to um, get at least three years of data to, to see if it might be a good possibility for us in North Dakota as well. And then number three is a very limited data. In fact, I debated, oh, should I show it or not? But it's only one year's of data from last year uh, with a simple comparison of 22 versus 30-inch rows. We had this, this uh, test in 2011, but we had hail and knocked out many of our trials. So we only have one year of data so far, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to take this to yield and, and build on that database. And then the last slide on that page is just a summary of the, the factors that I, that I talked about. So I'll tell you a little bit about this trial. It was planted on, on May 14th, and uh, it's an 83-day relative mature um, variety. And then I have the sign indicating simply the, the two row spacings, the 22 and 30 inch. And then uh, the fertilizer treatments I have listed here, there's five of them. And uh, they include an untreated check. This is with 1034O. Um, broadcasts 1034O at, at uh, 18 gallons per acre, and no, it wasn't incorporated, it was over the top. Um, then the 2 by 0 band at 12 gallons per acre, the deep band, and by the way, this was strip-tilled, but uh, we had difficulty getting in the field last fall, so it was strip-tilled this spring, and at the strip-tilling operation we did uh, deep band, which is 4 to 5 inch depth, uh, 
12 gallons of 1034O. And then, of course, the split treatment that I had mentioned earlier that looked favorably in other states and looks relatively positive. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing in the trial this year. And if you have uh, suggestions for other treatments in, in future years, um, it, uh, it'd be good to hear them. Um, any questions on, on the corn work I talked about? Uh, the question was any additional fertilizer, and yes, we did have uh, adequate nitrogen applied. And uh, we also had zinc applied too. When we applied the N, it was um, early in the season when we had lots of rain, we applied it and, and it was uh, uh, partially incorporated and then we had plenty of rain to move it in and, and that also included uh, zinc as well because this, the soil test uh, it was low on zinc, so we wanted to make sure up, up front we had adequate zinc, so that wasn't a limiting factor. The question was the rate of N. Um, it was enough for the yield we're going to get this year. Uh, I think we applied 150 pounds of actual, and then we had some residual N as well. So this is dry land, but around the Carrington Aquifer, and uh, this part of our, our land is a little has a little less well drained, and um, I, this is looking remarkably well with the, the lack of rain that we've had. Uh, the question was, why are you doing two by zero instead of two by two? And it's with the equipment we have, that it's that's the way we're set up. Um, we recommend placing starter fertilizer within two inches of the seed, starter fertilizer, and. To be honest with you, I don't know if there would be any difference. But there, the seminal roots are contact that 2 by 0 placement very quickly, and so do the, the nodal roots as well, the primary roots later. So to me, it's it's very close enough. Ideally, 2 by 2 yeah, if we had the choice, we'd go that. But I think I'm very confident the 2 by 0 is fine. Okay, the question was standability with the 22-inch versus the 30. Uh, there may be if, you're, if you have different... Uh, planting rates and, and uh, stands. Um, with both of the row spacings, we we uh, dropped about 36,000 seeds, and I guess I haven't I haven't run the, the analysis to see what the actual we actually ended up with. Um, I I would suspect we're in the low 30s for both. I guess uh, you asked because there must be a concern about that, but. But uh, I guess so far so good uh, with our trials. We just haven't seen any concern with the 22-inch rolls versus the 30 with uh, very similar plant populations. And the reason we're, we're choosing the 22 is because of the, the crop that we went by. Um, we, have, we have some hope for the in, for our energy beets, and if energy beets ever become a commercialized crop, they likely will be planted in 22-inch rolls, and if that's the case, uh, you may want to use that equipment for other crops. So we're, that's one of the reasons, at least, that we're using 22-inch rolls for both the corn as well as the dry bean. Is that 22-inch going to work with pinnel beans and sunflowers and all crops? Uh, or are you going to make us buy two different plants, 30 and a 22? Well, Bill, I'm glad you asked that. At least I can answer it with uh, the dry beans because we're, we're doing the same uh, spacing, roll spacing comparisons with the, the dry beans.